Hi, I'm TJ. If you want, you can we'll go ahead and put the, uh, hello, who we got here? Go ahead and put this down. Is that your bed? Oh, your bed. All right. So what we'll do is we'll just go for a, a quick walk. <laughs> okay. I know it's cold out. If you need a break or anything to warm up in the car, just let me know. Okay. And then I can bring some, some pups out and we can see what the reactivity is like. Okay. Um, was there anything that you wanted to show me before the dogs? Like we can do like leash behavior or recall or things like that. Um, let's see. Uh, <coughs> just the, as far as the command, she actually knows, I suppose, is just, um, she knows sit. when I'm gonna give her something, to, uh, a piece of food, she knows that when I say wait, she needs to wait, and then when I say okay, she can take it. Oh, that's good. Um, uh, she generally knows come, but is inconsistent about following it. Okay. Um, and then she's pretty good with if I, if I tell her stay there, she's decent. But again, somewhat inconsistent, but that's pretty much the extent of what she does. Okay. How much of a flight risk would you consider her to be? Like, if you drop the leash now, would she be gone and never come back? Or would you be able to get her to come back and stay with you as you're moving around? Um, we've had a couple times where she ran off, like, when someone left the door open. And we were able to track her. Um, and then there was one instance where, uh, she was actually able to tell her, come here, and she did. Okay, yeah. Let's uh, head down this way, and I'll grab my long leash out of the car. If you want, you can move your car. Did you guys park down there, I take it? Yeah. Okay. If you want, you guys can move your car down there to meet me. Okay. Because that, you know, that's where we're going to be doing the evaluation with the other cars away from the main street and stuff. Okay. <laughs> cool. Okay. There you go. All right. You can go ahead and let go. That way you don't get rope burn. <laughs> They're unstuck out of the car here. There we go. Hi. Hi. Oh. <laughs> is she generally shy with new people as well? Uh, she usually parks at them all the time. Oh, okay. Well, I guess we're off to a good start then. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it's usually when she's like far away. She's pretty good. If someone comes in to help now, she's pretty good about the good girl. that they're supposed to be there. Okay. okay. So what we'll do is we'll let her kind of drift off a little bit and then you just call her name once to see what she does. Oh, good girl. Good job. And the reason why I ask is because recall is going to probably be one of the most important things to utilize when we're working with reactive cases, just in being able to take their their focus off of whatever it is that's making them unsure or uncomfortable or reactive um, and then putting it back onto us temporarily to help them calm down and then back to getting them used to whatever it is somehow um, that's making them uncomfortable. <laughs> is she muzzle trained? <laughs> Good girl. Oh. Good girl. <laughs> That's that one's hard because our voice actually drops off over distance a lot more severely than you might think and then it's also windy so she barely heard you but she still responded so that was good all right the hard part i guess always comes with getting her attention when there's something okay we'll go ahead and test that out then i'll let you back on her normal leash 
And if you guys want to take a break in the car to warm up, I'll get our first pup. And what we'll do is I'll just start from a distance and we'll see how severe the reactivity is as I get closer. Um, because she doesn't have a muzzle on, we're going to keep them separate for now, depending on how well that they do. And then um, I'll get her kind of situated and used to the pups, hopefully one at a time over the periods of hopefully a day or two. It just depends on, on the pups and how long it takes for them to kind of get comfortable and sometimes being in a new environment too they might need to uh, get situated as well but at least that'll give us a good good indicator of how much work you know it's gonna it's gonna take um yep makes sense yeah generally the further away the worse her reactivity is usually she could bark up a bloody murder storm 50 feet away but then when she meets them she's okay okay Go ahead and try to redirect her to you. Hi, how you doing? I know. <laughs> I know. And you said that she's good meeting other dogs? Yeah. Now let's see what happens when we disengage. Oh! <laughs> 
We'll have to find out. <laughs> what we'll do is um, we'll, we'll start going up in sizes. <laughs> I know, you're having a good time. Let's see how she does with the next one. Here, girl. I know. You just want to play. <laughs> Come on. Easy cowboy. Easy. There you go. Good. Good. There you go. Almost. Good boy. What do you think? Good, okay. Better. Fiona, good girl. Come. Good girl. Good. Oh, 
ほうほうけ So, from what I can, can tell, a lot of it is just excitement, right?、Yeah. And you can tell that she's、uh, more excited for some pups than others. <laughs> and then the disengagement is also easier when she's less excited, too. So, a big part of it、um, will just be、um, being able to get her. Um, desensitized to seeing other pups so she's less reactive. Combining that with getting her better at redirecting and refocusing on, on the handler, which will make it so she's not pulling you towards the other pup.、Um, and then eventually, we want to get it to the point where we can actually engage and meet calmly because of the times that we have, she's still been a little bit overly excited and pulling. And normally, that would be. Okay, you know, when you meet good tempered pups, but especially pups that might be insecure or more shy, it could startle them, you know, put them on the back foot a little bit.、Um, okay, good girl. All right, I'll go put Fiona back, and then we'll go over any other questions that you might have. Good girl, come on. So, usually we try to do、um, behavioral adjustment training before medications. Did you try anything in the past before the vet put her on, on the meds? Or are the meds also for other reasons? So, she was on the meds when I started fostering her, so I just kept her on them. Okay. I've been able to take、uh, pups off. Medication before, and we'll see how she goes. But it might just be a conversation because she's been on it for so long now at this point. You'll have to have、uh, that conversation depending on how she does, of course. But we're hoping that she does well and she doesn't need additional help like that anymore and、uh, just save you money on、uh, in unnecessary medications in the long run.、Um, but you know, maybe talk to them about weaning her off because it's just been so long. Right, because、um, it seems like with her it's just a lack of self control, which you know, usually we develop with pups when they're like really young as puppies. We turn, we kind of teach them to you know, control themselves and be patient, like with the, with the waiting and everything before meeting things. And it just seems like it's from here so far just over excitement、um, and nothing like.、Um, Nothing like anxiety, because with anxiety cases, at least from what I've seen, I also haven't seen her off the meds too, which is the problem. But、um, they're usually more, even more intense than that, and a lot harder to actually break too. And it's same with the aggressive cases too; it's much harder to to break focus or to settle down. Whereas we're at least kind of able to after some work, right?、Um, but those other cases, it's it, like. I could be really far away with the other dog, and especially with aggressive cases, they'll be start like really trying to pull and, and stuff still in very intense, like a in red zone, trying to still get to, to me.、Um, and then with like fear cases,、um, they'll be going the opposite way, right?、Um, or trying to back up. And so, because of her demeanor and everything, I think we're just gonna need. A lot of social work <laughs> for, for sure. Hi.、Uh, Do you think、um, and some patience good is、work. also an aspect of why she has accidents in the house? Because, like, even last night, like, she was on the couch and I specifically said, Do you want to go outside? And she knows the routine. Like, and between just the five you know, seconds it took me to put my shoes on, and she had an accident in the house, even though she knew she was going to go outside. And, It's very rare, but just every once in a while, just a random 
keep an eye on it because that also again goes back to like puppy training them being able to hold and use bladder control right uh, as well as signaling to us when they need to go um she also might just be comfortable with relieving herself in, in your home at this point unfortunately i think some of it too is um probably the being chained up outside for years it's just taken her a while to get accustomed to there's a time and a place for it yeah um is that we'll try to work on that too you know might as well while while she's here but luckily uh we can usually get pups on a good routine schedule like you guys because they're going to be going out with me kind of constantly anyways so it's a little bit easier for us to kind of get on a good routine it just might be more or less um outings than you guys are used to at home but right. you might be able to uh, to compensate and or we can at least get her to try to hold for longer before relieving herself we'll see because of what he said as well and because she's a lot older at this point yeah. um sometimes just getting them a target inside makes it easier as well we could use like artificial turf before most mostly for for puppies if we had a client up in dc uh, in an apartment and the nearest grass was like two blocks away there's no way this little puppy is going to make it so we had uh set up like the artificial turf out on her patio so that way she can be kind of quickly able to know where to go and kind of make a good routine out of it and if she is only having problems sometimes and it's just needing to wait like another five or ten seconds instead of her having to wait for you she just goes to that area and then what we usually do to develop that into normal potty training is when they start going to that area to relieve themselves we redirect them to either hit the bell or go towards the door and it's like oh, okay you want to go potty this way right and you just kind of get them into that habit um yeah <laughs> well we'll see what we can do you said it's sometimes harder with uh with older pups and then especially with other um other history as well so we'll we'll see how it is it's nothing like um a uti or anything like that too no. i've had that before no i mean when when i first got her it was you know like all the time and it's very sporadic now she's she's pretty good it's getting better okay yeah. well that's um, good She's not, I, I don't know kind of uh, what you do with them at night or whatever. She isn't uh, great trained. Um, if you wanted to put her in one, that's fine. Just letting you know she's not accustomed to it. No problem. We like said, well, we can see if we can get her used to being in one, especially around like meal times and at night. But uh, we have, and he said, uh, play pen set up and then dividers and or if they're okay usually i don't allow um usually puppies but potty trained unpotty trained pups to free roam yeah. right uh it just makes it harder to prevent an accident right. and them actually being in a crate sometimes helps because they don't like to go where they yeah, lay yeah so long as you follow that rule to a degree if you still like overextend it right then they're gonna feel like they need to go and they can't hold it anyways and then they just learn to go in the crate uh and then on top of that if she's already not accustomed to a crate it would take time to get her accustomed before trying to do that too right. uh, so but what we'll do is we'll definitely work on the, uh, the leash walking behavior will help to reinforce everything because that will kind of go with not pulling right and redirecting and refocusing and maintaining focus mm -hmm. and then the social aspect will help with desensitizing and calming her down and then we'll work on everything else in the in the downtimes back at home okay great <laughs> all right i have to get her a different harness set up too but we'll see how that goes all righty I'll let you guys say goodbye. Alright, so we're out doing an evaluation walk with Miss Murph here. Goal is to kind of get a better idea of her walking behaviors so we can start making a good plan on how to address them.
Sometimes different pups will pull for, for different reasons. So we know her reactivity and her excitement when seeing other pups is gonna definitely be, be one. So we have plans on socializing and desensitizing her as well as some, some heavy redirection practice. Here, she's starting to pull a little bit. Looks like she's just kind of following her nose. She walks a little bit fast, but nothing too extreme. Especially considering um, her breed, I guess it's just gonna be that she's very nose driven and she's just gotten used to ignoring the, uh, the back pressure on the leash. here all right just trying to get to something and we'll do some experimenting during her stay as well she did it looks like had another harness um, with her so we might give that one a try sometimes pups especially if they've just been doing it for a long enough time, will get so used to just pulling against like um, either their, their collars or a harness like this, where it doesn't have any kind of repercussion for her actions, right? So here, she's just hard pulling because she's just following her nose. It's just completely, um, completely ignoring the, the leash pressure and just keep on driving forward here. And you can see the harness probably does a good job for what it was designed for. And that's just to kind of comfort and pad her when she's pulling so she's not choking herself, which is fine. Some pups will do better when the harness or the collar or any device that kind of naturally corrects them when they pull. And it just makes, helps to make a little bit more impact. And sometimes, like I said, just because they're not used to it can really help go a long ways in reconditioning their behavior. Usually there's a couple things that really help with a pup not pulling. One is gonna be focus. Like if they're focused on you, then they won't be pulling the whole time as well. Um, and you can kind of tell, I don't think she's even looked back at me once, right? She's either been nose on the ground or nose up ahead. And sometimes it's easier for them to know where you are in space if they're walking right next to you. But we can also, they can also develop enough awareness to be in front or behind you and still see where you are as well. Good girl, there we go. So there's something. I'm gonna go ahead and cross the street here because got the truck in the way. So here, when she starts pulling, I'm just gonna stop. Good girl. And then when she finally looks back at me, I'm gonna let her know that I appreciate that. Start developing that, that focus, right? We want her to kind of not get used to being able to pull through the pressure anymore to get to what she wants. A lot of times, especially if we're just going in the same direction or we're too tired to, to work with them, will allow that bad behavior to kind of get in place because it's just easier to kind of go along with the pulling than it is to go against it or to correct it. And so that's why we want to try to make that as easy as possible for the parents. You can see here, she's really just pulling right through that leash pressure to follow her nose more. Now I'm going to use some leash pressure to get her going. Good girl, good potty.
So every time that she pulls, I'm gonna go ahead and pause. So she can get used to walking on a loose leash. Then any time that she hard pulls forward, I'm gonna take a couple steps backwards to help counterbalance that. Got a bunch of peaks of crust and food there. So we're gonna go ahead and walk her through so she doesn't eat any of it and get an upset stomach. So same thing here. And now this time, instead of just pulling her away from her nose, I'm gonna step into the leash so it doesn't get tight, right? So that way we can start to also condition her and let her know that if the leash is loose, then you can smell things. But if the leash gets tight, you have to pay attention to us and go ahead and see if we can offer her a treat here when she looked back. I'll also try her name here in a moment. See, so I'm pulling and instinctively she's just counter pulling and she is not interested in her treat at all. Hey. Hi. Okay. Well, that works too. Would you like your treat? Yeah, I'm gonna put it on the ground. No, okay. So that'll be something to look into. I know that, and she's pulling again, so we're gonna go ahead and backpedal a little bit until she stops. I know that her parents wanted her on um, a, a no meat diet to help with her anal glands. Um, double checking the bag of the, the treats that she came with does have chicken and fish in it. So i um, not sure if they're aware of that or if those two proteins are okay with them. Um, and so that's something that you also have to be really kind of careful of, especially when you know pups have allergies. You'd be really surprised at how many yogurt treats or peanut butter treats also have like things like chicken in them or chicken by byproduct or um, chicken fat, things like that. Um. Okay, so all I'm doing right now to disrupt the pulling behavior is making it so she just can't ignore it, right? So as soon as the, the pulling stops, I start walking back. Once the leash is nice and loose again, she's allowed to continue on forward. But yeah, a lot of it is just the fact that uh, she's just following her nose and she's not paying any attention to where I am in, in space. Good to see that at least pacing and normal excitement isn't too much of a problem. It's probably when she just catches the scent and wants to follow it, she takes off. But normal, normal walking speed isn't actually too bad. So here, same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and let her smell and explore while the leash is nice and loose. And then when she's ready to go again, or when I'm ready to go, we'll start walking will activate a little bit of that leash pressure. Almost. Okay, and there we go. So, as you can tell, it is possible for a dog to walk nicely on leash and still you know, have their nose on the ground and be exploring things. It's just a lot more 
difficult because they're a lot more inclined to get distracted and then just start following that distraction, in which case we'd have to get their attention back and have them either slow down or wait or refocus on us or at least recognize the leash pressure. We'll start on a couple drills. Later on, either this evening or tomorrow, and we'll record it for her parents. We're we'll gonna just try to get her used to recognizing the leash pressure again, instead of just ignoring it and feel rewarded for actually uh, listening to the leash as opposed to just pulling through it to kind of get to whatever she wants. Girl, so you can kind of see there, she started just hard driving forward to get to whatever her nose was. And I wanna, I wanna teach her that that's not gonna be the, the way to get to what she wants anymore. It was good because it was very brief, but she did redirect her focus. It was pulling so. So same thing there. She started pulling to get to a scent and I just pulled her back into me. See if she needs to use the bathroom or anything. good to note too is this the fact that she only pulls in those short bursts when she really finds a, a scent to track with her nose and it's just not a constant thing. I was hoping we'd also run into some pups but I guess not. It'll be okay because we'll want to develop her basics pretty well first before we start integrating pups, but we'll still take any opportunity to practice while we're out too though. Okay, so she's using her nose, there's no pressure on the leash. Good. Want her to get used to walking on a loose leash and then recognizing when the leash pressure hits. There, small tug back in towards me. Try again with one of her treats. Murph. Okay. Bye. All right, the bag was pretty empty, so it might just be because she's getting used to a new area and she's too distracted for treats. It would just help to make her feel rewarded when she redirects her focus. But especially if she's more interested in following her nose than the treat, then the treat's not really going to, to help the process very much. You don't always have to use treats, but you just have to have something, you know, on top of your communication and praise and approval um, to help them recognize that they are being appreciated for what they just did. And also rewarded so like working with a, a toy or a ball and letting them play around with it 
after they listen. It's another good example. You know, so long as they're so long as they're uh, they're appreciative of the reward, it helps. Hi. Okay. You can go ahead and move her off to the side here. Hi, how you doing? Good girl. Okay, so we have another pup over there, but she's not really paying attention, right? She's just got her nose on the ground. So once again, letting her smell and use her nose so long as she's not pulling. And then every time that she pulls, um, just making it so she has to recognize that, that leash pressure by making it even greater by going backwards or pulling her towards me or stopping. But just making it so she just can't ignore it anymore. She's doing pretty good though, especially for just the first evaluation walk. Okay, you can kind of see there, good girl. Got interested in her nose and started going forward. And as soon as she starts driving forward and hits that leash, we go backwards, right? And just don't allow her to continue pulling anymore. Also don't want her to get into the trash. Don't see what's actually interesting her that much or causing her so much interest on something. But we're just trying to interrupt that train of thought and that drive. really try to focus on teaching her what to do and what not to do first before adding in any corrections. I want to try to find a way to make her feel rewarded and appreciated for refocusing and maintaining focus. So that's going to be the, the goal right now for her. Can be really important too because once she gets excited from seeing another dog we're already having troubles redirecting her now when there's really you know to our eyes nothing going on it's going to be that much more difficult to pull her attention and her focus back when there is something exciting for her or something really exciting for her i guess Good girl, good pee pee. Right. So we'll go ahead and pause the video here and give her another break. And like I said, we'll either do formal drills or just continue with this walking exercise for this evening. Murphy, Murph. Oh, good girl, good listen. Okay. Good listen. At least, at least you came back. You don't want the treats right now. That's fine. Oh, there's a pup right there. Murph. 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 
Murph. Murph. Murph. Murph. Good girl. So same thing, even though she's more excited, we just keep going with the same exercise. Right. Good girl. And try to break line of sight too to help out. I'm just moving her backwards to help her calm down. Because so long as she maintains a fixation on whatever is making her excited in the first place, it'll be harder for her to de-escalate herself. So just by breaking line of sight, by moving backwards, um, helps her out a little bit. There we go. And you can really see there, even though she was hard pulling and we were giving the equal tugs back and saying her name, we completely registered nothing because she's just used to um, ignoring the, the leash pressure so much. All right. So we'll try again. As soon as she starts pulling and overreacting, we'll backtrack again. Good girl. Good girl. Every time she pulls out, I'm gonna go ahead and pressure her back in so she can't just keep driving forward on the, on the leash pressure. The trick to this right now is patience and perseverance as opposed to just adding additional pressure, right? Later on, we'll definitely need to do that if it's still too difficult to get her attention, whether to redirect or to maintain focus. But uh, outside of, good girl, that instance where she saw somebody or an, and another pup, she had been doing really good. Uh, at least we got to get one reaction in this video too with her. Murph. Oh, good girl. Oh yes, good job. Okay.